repeat after me, simple song, y'all. You ready? See, I've got the victory, you say. I've got the victory. Simple song. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that nothing can stop me. No, 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 no. no. You got it. See, I've got the victory, you say. I've got yes, the I do. Yeah. Come on, y'all. See, oh, 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 I've got the victory. Everybody sing it all over the world. Every boy and girl. I've got the victory. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's check it out, y'all. Yeah, I've got hey, the victory. You got it now. Great day, HBWC Nation. Your boy, Pastor Levi Rose, senior pastor. Harvest Building, Worship Center, guys, welcome to our Harvest, Deeper Thursday. We're excited up about this word. We've been teaching since last week. So, guys, I need you to, to share our page, like our page. You guys on YouTube, talk to us tonight. We're talking in the book of James. It's the topic, cancel culture. Cancel culture. So, guys, go ahead, get your pen, get your iPad, whatever you need. We're going to dialogue tonight because you and I need to go deeper. Hey, wherever you're viewing us at tonight, tell us where, you, where you're viewing us from, and I speak blessings over you and your household. Listen, let's go ahead and pray, get this word in you, and, and allow you to get back to doing what you know you can do. Uh, so, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, bless our viewing audience. God, slow us down in our emotions. Let us understand the word. As James said, a lot of word to be implanted in us, that the word may be used in us, in Jesus' name, every heart said, amen. You know, we need to study James because we have this thing out there called cancel culture. It's been used a lot in our political arenas and different religious backgrounds. And we need to use James, the book of James, what we're studying, to, to tackle what we call cancel culture, culture even in the church itself against the world affairs and things around the world. Listen, cancel culture is a, is, it refers to a mass withdrawal of support from public figures of celebrities or whatever form you like to choose to cancel, to, or to try to cancel it out. Now, culture itself is just a bunch of customary beliefs or social forms or material um, traits of racial, religion, or social group. That's what a culture is, something that you create. Well, James, the book of James is a good book. We need to study right now because it is, it is, is, is an, an old book, but it's, it's, I'm talking about it is modern right now. So I want you to do something. Every time I talk about something, put it in the feed that someone else may know what we're teaching tonight. The book of James, let's, let's find out who James is in the New Testament. It's the 20th book. It's the 20th book in the New Testament. There are 27 books in the New Testament. James is the 20th one. Well, who is James? James is Jesus' brother. They call him his half-brother. James is Jesus' brother. He's is Jesus' brother. There are over, there are 148, 108, not 48, 108 verses in James. 108 verses in James. James write at least 54 imperatives, which means James is saying there are 54 commands that James is right is, 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 is in his writing. There are 54 imperatives. There are 54 commands. Also, James was not a believer as when Jesus was living. He became a believer after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So James now is writing from a heart and in a divine and theological construct. It, it, can you imagine watching your brother hang on the cross, watching your brother be beaten? Listen, whether he believed in him or not, that's still his brother. Can you imagine someone beating your brother whether you believe in them or not? You don't want them killed. You don't want them shot. You don't want them to be talked about regardless whether you agree with their religion or whatever background they have. They are st they're still your brother. So James has now become a believer. Now he's a believer of the, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, but he also teaching from a passion about that was my brother that died for the sins of the world. James is also writing to a bunch of people who have been scattered abroad. It's, they call it a trail, the 12 tribe um, that have been scattered abroad because of persecution, 
because of religion and stuff, they are scattered abroad. And James is now writing to them to, to, to encourage them, but also confront some persecution that they're, that they're having right now. And, and, and James is also, he's a pastor now in Jerusalem, but the people are scattered abroad because of things that are not right in that era. So now we talked about James in that council culture, and, and we talked about James last week. Just a little recap. James, James, we talked about James last week. But to counsel a culture, guys, here's what it's going to require. James is remembering what his brother said on the, on, on the mount. When Jesus said to the church, he said in 5.13 in Matthew, he said, you are the salt, you are the salt of the earth. Basically, you're the salt on the earth. You're going to penetrate the dark rocks on the earth. You're going to bring her, um, some ingredient to the earth that they need. You're the salt. You're the different. You're the distinction for the earth. Then he tells in verse 14, you are the light of the world. So James is going to remind them that there's a culture out there that you have to counsel that's trying to get in your business, your mind, your marriage, your relationship, that's, saying, that's, counter, that, that's, that's counter, countering what you're believing in. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You're, they're not salt to you. You are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. So James is saying you're on the run. You've been dispersed. You find um, places to live in different places. And so J in chapter 1, James gave reason for writing. He said the purpose I'm going to, the reason I'm writing chapter 1 is the purpose of your trials and tribulation. Understanding what your trials are for and understanding what your tribulation is for. Remember in James chapter 1, he showed you trials come to make you strong. God, we don't know where they come from, who sent them, but God allows them. When he allows them to come, we allow them to come, they come to make you strong. Like fire going in something, it makes you stronger, it makes you better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then he said the Bible talks about the testing of your faith. He's a kind of all joy. But also temptation come to make you fall. Trials come to make you strong. Temptation come to make you fall. Understand that trials and temptation, one come to make you fall and one come to make you strong. He also talked about the awards of endurance, and he talked about self-control. You know, slow to, you know, slow, so, slow, uh, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. That's self-control. And then he talked about being an active doer of the Word, Ooh, an active, a participator of the Word of God. Be fluent in it. Don't just hear, hear a word, Respond to the word. Now, chapter two is where we're going to spend our this week, the, today, at tonight, deeper Thursday, and then next week we do chapter three. Today we're going to talk about what he confront and what we need to confront or let our counsel that culture out: classism, prejudice. Oh, I, I would even go to say racism. Now, he, he may not speak to racism here, but it's an ism, classism, prejudice. He's going to talk about that in a little bit. We're going to also talk about how to. Exercise your faith. How to counsel that culture by living out your faith. Salt of the earth. Come on, salt of the earth and light to the world. Salt of the earth and light to the world. So James 2, 1 said this right here. My brothers and sisters, do not show prejudice if you possess faith in a glorious, in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. Now look what James says. He kind of, I like what he said, if you possess faith. If you got faith, now if you, he give, he, he setting them up, he setting them up, he shouting them enough, if you possess that faith, the faith, the, the faith in God, you know, the faith in God, if you got this faith in God, that he is your savior, he confront that first. If you, he said, but my sister, do not show prejudice if you possess this faith now, this classism, this, this, this stuff we see in our country, racialism, this ra racism, it's, it's a, if you possess faith, you shouldn't even be doing that kind of stuff. That's why we try to make it. I don't understand why we make excuses for why people do racism and prejudice. That's no excuse. James come from. He come full circle and said, "Now, if you possess the faith, if you possess the faith, don't be don't 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 show prejudice." Then in James two two, he said, "If someone comes to you in your assembly, they had to call a synagogue and gathering." wearing a gold ring and fine clothing and a poor person enter in filthy clothes. Here's what he, 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 he's confronting. He look at verse number three. He said, do not pay attention to the one who is in fine address and say, you sit here and you sit there and the poor person, you stand here and, and you sit there. What he's saying is you've already pre-planned pre in your mind 
where the poor is going to sit. You've already pre-planned in your mind where the rich is going to sit. But understand the context. You got to go up tonight. Understand the construct of where they are, uh, where, they, where, where they're at. They're in a place in, uh, where the Christians are on the run, and where they've settled at. At that time, Christians didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of fluent money in, uh, in that time. And those others who had the money, they knew it. And they knew it. They did it. And most of them had the money, they believed in Jesus Christ. So they had, they watching this culture out there that treat people who without money real bad. They are low esteem. And so now if you're not careful, those people will show up in your synagogue and you become inferior to them because you don't have what they have. You become inferior to them because you don't have their degree. You become inferior to them because you don't work at the same job they work at. You become inferior to them when they show up in your house, show up in your sanctuary, show up at your school. Now hear what you don't want to do because you can flip it also. You can also get mad with them, and then when they show up, you're like, you're not going to sit on the front anyway because I don't like you. Well, that's not good either. What James is saying, what James is saying, that's the way the culture work, works. I don't want that in the church. I don't want that in the synagogue. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We try to treat everybody right that shows up. Now, 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 hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying don't honor, and I'm not saying don't respect people. Because if I go to my mom's house, she is the mom. We're going to respect her position. We're going to respect the position. Now, respecting someone's position is not the same thing as partiality. That's not the same thing as being prejudiced. We're going to, if the president shows up somewhere, we're going to move a parking space for him and show him respect for the position. That's a difference between respect, honor, and being prejudiced and being in, in, in a form of classism. And so James is confronting this behavior. Look at James 2, 4. He said that in the same, he said that is the same as saying that some people are better than others, and you would be acting like a crooked judge. Oh my goodness. He said, when he started out, if you possess the faith, if you possess the faith like you said, no one said you were saved, you did. So if you possess the faith, and you operate in prejudice, you got to challenge yourself. He's asking you, can you really be trusted with the gospel? Can you really be trusted with the gospel if you say, if you possess this faith? You say you have. You kinda, we can, the James is not giving nobody no excuse. We don't need no watered down Christians. We don't need nobody to make an excuse. Either we are in this game or we out this game. Now, the thing is, we're not perfect. I'm not saying we're perfect. But the Bible does say, behold it. He's not saying be perfect because none of us are. We're working towards something. But he's saying that should be a distinction between the world and the church. In verse 5, he said, listen, my, listen, my brother, listen, my dear brothers and sisters, do not choose the poor. He did not God choose the poor in the world to be rich in faith, heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? Now, look at this text. He's not not. James is not magnifying um, being broke. He's not magnifying poverty. He's not magnifying saying they're better off than the person who got money. What James is saying, people tend to, people tend to look forward toward God when they, don't, when, they, when, when, they, when they don't have much, when they, when they have nothing else but God. So God chose, what God did, he chose to go up on, to, to, to show himself among those who didn't have nothing who didn't have to battle with their money, who didn't have to battle with their success, who didn't have to battle with their prestige. Look at the guys he picked to walk around him. He's choosing guys that are constant a culture who don't have to battle with that or the other. I don't have to worry about this or that. Or listen, you can, you can say what you want to say. It's hard for a man to walk away from a five-star, making out a job, and, da, 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 da. And, and, and God say, hey, I need you to go walk this way. Go to a job making um, six figures instead of seven figures. And he's got an income, and his house note, and all that kind of stuff. It is hard for a brother to make that decision, like it or not. It is hard for anyone to make that decision. So God chose to go among the poor and say, tell you what, let me start, I'm going to start from scratch. Now, I'm going to create something out of you. Now, you'll make more money call you with me, but here what you are, I don't want you to do is don't forget where you come from because you'll have more compassion for those along the way. Now, people, rich folks still can be saved. The millionaires still can be saved. Middle class still can be saved. But what James is reminding them don't be upset because you don't have much as what the other guy has. God started with you. 
God started with your class of people. He started with the poor. He didn't start with the rich. He came among the poor. Even John the Baptist came among the poor. It, Jesus came among the poor because he knew their heart was ready to receive. So he's telling them, don't negate what you got going on. God still can use you to win those who are, who have more money and bring them to the kingdom. Now, let's, get, let's jump around a little bit. Remember, I'm doing James in a place of a helicopter ride. That when you go back and study James, you can tie things together. I'm hoping I'm setting you up right. I'm not trying to do a, a philosophical, <laughs> philosophical or a theological teaching on a deep level because I'm not trying to make you a scholar, but I want you to be straight up in your faith because we got to cancel out this culture. The culture is telling us about our, about our sexual identity. You got to cancel that culture out. The culture is trying to tell the church how to worship. Cancel that culture out. The church trying to tell how our relationship should be because we're trying to win. We're trying to win folks to our Facebook page. We have to cancel that culture out. Love the world. Love people. And let them know there is a distinction, you know. Now, verse 8. Look at verse 8. He said verse 8. He kind of landed his plane. He said, but if you fulfill the royal law as expressed in, the script, in this scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. Now, here's how he, where he's confronted in that. He said, listen, now you got classes out there. You got professors out there. Don't you guys do that. He's talking to the church. Don't get involved in that. He said, but listen, if you fulfill the royal law, the royal law, he's talking about the totality of the scripture. The royal law. You got to take a commandment. All the law. You got to take a commandment. Remember, Jesus came and fulfilled the law. We, we live in Jesus now. But we also honor the law. We still obey and honor the law. And he's confronting that. And he used this text right here. You shall love the Lord your God. But he said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, you do well. Le 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 Leviticus 19 and 18 says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is what God is saying. Love your neighbor I know they don't do right by you. Love your neighbor. When someone shows up in your, in, your, in, your, in your space, it's an opportunity to show some love. Now, it's not an opportunity to, 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 to show prejudice or classism or make the other person feel less than themselves. That's not loving yourself. Loving yourself is I respect where you are. And listen, you showed up, we're going to love you where you are, but we're not going to love him less to love you more. That's not love. Loving someone else. I got I to gotta stop loving my wife to love you. No, I got to stop hanging out with you to hang out with her. Come on now, that's not love. All this stuff. We, you, and, I, and then when I try to choose to hang out with somebody else or love somebody else, you get mad because I'm loving somebody else. That's not biblical. That's not godly. That's a culture outside. It's trying to bring division within your soul, man. That's not God at all. Then James 2, 9 said this right here. He said, but if you show prejudice, you are committing sin, and we are convicted by the law as violated. Woo! Moses did not give no. He forbade it. He forbade all respect of prejudice. Now, here's what people don't like in our world, and this is a, I said, got to cancel this culture. Here's what we, do, we our country, don't, we fight with this. The law of accountability. Somebody write that in the feed right now. The law of accountability. The law of accountability. The law of the Old Testament were written to hold people accountable, accountable. And so now we have, we don't like being, a, we like our freedom. We like our independence. We like doing what we want to do, saying what we want to say. And that's okay to be free. Oh, that's what Christ died for. He died for us to be free. But remember when James 1, when he started out the, script, the text in James 1, he called himself a bond servant. Pastor, what's a bond servant? A bond servant is this right here. Now, I once was a slave to sin. I was a slave to that master. I, I was a slave. He had me in bondage. He had me in bondage. I could not go free. But then one day, Jesus brought the key and broke it off me, and now I'm a free man. I'm a free man. Now, here's the thing. I'm a free man, but I chose to I, I chose a different master. The old man, the old man under the slave of sin, death, condemnation. Even though I did, it, even though I was in that thing, that, that was a master. That was a master over there. So when Jesus came and unlocked the key, he became my master. The only two different between the, the, the old master and the new master, the new master is not gonna make you stay. 
<laughs> the old master is going to force you to stay. The old master is going to condemn you to stay. But the new master say you choose to stay. Uh-uh, I'm not putting no chains on you. I'm not going to lock you up. I'm not going to manipulate you. You can choose to stay. You choose to worship. You choose to pray. You choose to go to church. You choose to worship me. You choose to be. I'm not going to do that to you. James said, I choose to stay even though I can leave. That's a bond servant. You choose to stay even though you can leave. And that's what James is saying here. He said, I want the law of accountability on my life. I know I'm a fool. I can be doing crazy stuff. I promise you, if without the word of God being in my face, and I'm, I'm telling you, I will drift off. I will drift off. I'm, I know me. I need the accountability. I need the body of Christ coming together. I need to be online on Facebook with the body of Christ to keep me. I, you need it also. Don't look at me like that on Facebook and YouTube. Come on, let's talk to each other tonight. You need it. If you need the law of accountability, type, yes, I do. Come on, talk to me tonight. We need the law of accountability, not from a place that's making us do nothing. We choose to submit to the law of accountability. Now look at verse 10. James said, for the one who obeys the whole law but fails in one point become guilty of them all. James saying, and I'm not saying that, what he's not saying is that if you commit a sin or I commit a sin, do something wrong, there are different consequences with different things you do. Now, there is are. There is are. So James was not, he was saying, we're not trying to take this out and say, well, we okay doing He's No, if you make, if you, if you don't do right by one, you hurt them all. That's accountability. He was trying to show them the gravitas of obeying God's word. This is thing is it's not easy, and James knew that. And James was not trying to water it down. He was not trying to give us the uh, easy way out. He said, listen, this thing is for real. People are dying and going to hell every day, and they need to see a distinction and say, yes, I, yes, I love God. Yes, I submit to his will. Yes, I love people. Yes, no, I'm not. Do I struggle? Yes. But yes, I choose the law of accountability. Now, let's go down to verse 15. He said, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed, and likes daily food. Now here's what he just shifted. Look what he just did. He just shifted. He shifted from prejudice and the front. He wanted to show a lifestyle different of the church from prejudice, racism, classism. That we don't do that. We we listen. We got to be careful here now because there are there there there. Listen, let's be careful. Let's do. Let's talk real. There are there. Are, if you don't deal with your prejudice, if you don't, I uh, deal with my racism. It's gonna come out in my pulpit. You said, Pastor, no, it won't. Yes, it will. My culture, that what I don't allow or accept, I'm telling my congregation to accept. What I don't speak truth to power to, I'm telling my folks it's okay too. Be careful now that we don't send a, a message by course about racism, injustice, classism, that we got, we, we, we like, we, we oppose who I hung out with over there. But I don't post when I hang out with her because I don't want people to see me hanging out with her. Be careful how we send messages back. So now James is not going to show us if you possess this faith like you said you do. And I say I do. Well, let's put it to work then. James said, if your brother or sister is poor in verse 15, clothed and like daily food. And one said to him, verse 16, go in peace, keep warm and eat well, but do not give them what they need. He said, what good is it? Oh my goodness. I love what our church just did this past Tuesday. We do it every, do it every month to keep ourselves connected with Scripture and our community. Man, we gave our, every month, we give our hundreds by hundreds, I'm not 100, but hundreds, bags of grocery every month, feeding our community. They're like what they need. We're trying to meet those needs as much as we can. It does not matter what kind of car you show up in. All that does matter is that we show you love. That means we have to put forth action, not just talk, but action. So James says in James 2.17, he says, also, if it does not have works, it is dead being by itself. Woo, James said, now you said in verse, James said in verse 1, go back to verse 1. He said, if you possess this faith, don't show prejudice. Then he comes down here in verse 17, and he accosted. He says, faith, let me see what faith is. He said, how this thing works. Also, faith, if it's not, if it's, if, if it's not working, is dead being by itself. But if, listen, he's, he's telling us this thing is powerless. If you don't show the deeds of, 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 your, of what you believe in, this thing is without power, 
no power. You say, I say all day. He said, but if there's no deeds to this thing, if you're not showing deeds, it's powerless. It is no good for you and or either for God. But then James said to 18, but if someone will say, you have faith and I have work. Look at James is personalizing this thing now. James said, but if someone will say, you have faith, I have work. He'll say, show me your faith without works and I will show you faith by my work. James said, listen, uh, listen, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I am about to put my work, my faith to action by doing something. Remember James, the first chapter of James, he said that allow the word of God be implanted in you and I, and that we become doers of the word and not just hearers only. You see what James is doing? He's counseling a culture, and he realized the only way, the only sure way to counsel a culture is to be a doer of this word, the doer of God's commandments, the doer of what we believe God's word said. A lot of people, a lot of us are struggling with the culture outside. Maybe one of the issues is that we got to become better doers of the word. And I'm going to tell you now, all the class session is always open. The class session is always open. I promise you, the devil is going to send enough, enough training your way that the classroom session is always open and we always can show the deeds of love, the deeds of God's work on whether we, if, if we possess this faith now, if we possess this faith, like James said, let's, show, let, let, let's put it to work. Verse 19 said this right. He said, you believe that God is, is one. Well, good. Kudos to you. Then the de but even, <laughs> even the demon believe that. And trim with fear. This is what they call it, monotheistic theology. Monotheistic is one God. He said, yeah, we believe that. Like, Muslims believe that. Judaism believe that. Christianity believes that. We all believe. We are monotheistic. We believe in one God. He said, but listen, if, as, if all you're doing is believing, you're no different than the devil. I mean, if that's all you're doing is believing. If all you're doing, now, now this is some tough stuff to swallow. If all you're doing is believing and there's no action, we're no different than a demon himself. That's what he do. Oh, I would never be aligning myself up with a demon be compared to a demon. He said, I'm not, and I'm here. And I, and I think he meant to say it like that, but that's what I'm taking it. You mean tell me, I mean, this thing is just like, you know, he said, no, 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 no. Don't, if all you're doing is believing, he said, but if not action, you might not be a believer. That's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow, Jane. Jane, you tough. Jane, listen, this is Jane's brother. Jane don't have no way. I mean, he have no room for, no room for excuse. Look at James 20. He said, but would you, but would you like evidence, you empty fellow, that faith <laughs> without works is used to his table. That's, it's time to call it evidence. That's, that's, that's called in the evidence. Our first evidence on the case. He's a, I'm stuck in the case here. That's called in the evidence. Let's bring someone in the room that you believe in. You believe in our, remember the Christianity, the, the faith, the faith movement really started with Abraham, Father Abraham. Of course, you go back to Noah, to Noah and, 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 and um, Adam, who life started that, and Noah, who brought folks out with him. But the boy that really brought the, the Hebrew is Abraham, the father of faith. They call him the father of faith. And the Bible talk about Abraham, and James bring up Abraham. He says, Since, let's go back to Abraham, the, the lineage of Jesus Christ. He said, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, our brother, his son, on the altar? Oh, my goodness, God told Abraham to go sacrifice his son. Abraham takes his, 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 his plight to go sacrifice his son. Now, can you imagine the argument, the fight going on with his Sarah, his wife, and he's going to go against this culture? My goodness, he's about to go against the culture of sacrificing a son. That was not that was not allowed. God, so now Abraham is walking out in faith, doing what he believed God called him to do because he trusted God, not because he trusted the, in the man, his Isaac, or even the situation. Abraham trusted God and went along his way on his journey, totally opposite of the culture he lived in. I'm telling you people, this is what God, this is where revival really is going to come in at. When we go against the culture, 
that we live in, when we start doing things different from our culture, when we start praying different from our culture, when we start worshiping different from our culture, when we really start doing things different, opposite of our culture, we'll see a miracle sign, wonders come alive in our nation and in our churches. So Abraham, so, so James said, let me give you some evidence. James said, give you my fa our father Abraham. He said, but Abraham, on the 22nd verse, he said, you see that his faith was working together with his work. Oh, come on now. This is a love affair. Faith works with. Faith is not just a mental ascent. Faith has to be an action of movement. It's like love. Love, love can't be a mental ascent. Love is an action word. And James said, just like faith, faith without work is dead. James said, faith, he said, he said, Abraham, faith worked with his work, with his work and his faith was perfected by his word. So my faith is perfected by what I do. My faith come alive, but I make it perfect by what I do. Faith come alive. Faith without work is imperfect. Faith without work is imperfect. James is saying, you can say you have faith all day, but with working in, baby, I'm telling you, faith make it perfect. Faith make it come alive. Pastor, but what do you mean faith does that? Then, uh, then did not did not Paul say we are saved by grace through faith that is not by our own works? You're correct in your scripture, in your theological construct. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention, HBMC Nation. I thank you for being Bible readers. I thank you for that. But also understand the context, the construct that Paul was talking to. Paul was combating a religiosity. He was combating a, 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 a Judaism, uh, and they, they believed that you had to work to be saved. They thought you had to live right to be saved. They thought you had to do all this, that God may accept you without and leaving out Jesus Christ. That's what Paul was saying. No, don't do no work. All you got to do is receive him, and you are saved. This is not the same kind of teaching James is doing. James is saying, listen, if you, now that you got faith. Come on now. You should show some signs. Now that you got faith, there should be a distinction. So, so racism, classism, prejudice that's in our churches, in our pulpit, being taught by some of our people. You almost, I'm, I'm like James now. If you possess the faith, why we got prejudice? If you possess the faith, why we got racism? If you possess the faith, why do we have classism? Let's talk to each other now. Come on, Facebook Nation. Talk to me now. Come on, YouTube. Talk to me now. If this, if we possess the faith, like James said in 2 1. Why do we have prejudice? I'm not saying that we all don't have our own individual struggles that we must have. That's why we need the Word of God to be accountable to. I say, Lord, I don't like the way I'm feeling about her. I don't like the way I'm feeling about him. I want to I want to show your love so God deliver me. Help me. Help me to be a better person around them. Help me to be a, be a better person around a race of people, a class of people that God, we can show the love of Jesus Christ to everyone that we need. Now look at verse 20. Three, he said, and the scripture was to feel, saying, Now Abraham believed God and was counted to him for righteousness, for he was called a friend of God. This man is called the friend of God because of what he did. <laughs> He's called a friend of God by what he did. Faith is causing other names to come alive. Faith gets you in the room, but other names create other, other uh, but, but, but work create other names. Faith gets you in the room. But works and deeds create other names God called. He called him a friend of God. He's a friend of mine. I mean, he's, a, he's, he, he, he's, not, he's my son, but he's a friend of mine. <laughs> he's, he's a father of faith, and he's a friend of mine because he's activated. He's moving the things of God. He's coming against a culture that don't like him, and he called him friend. 24 said this right here. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. See, now here James ties Paul's theology with his theology. He did not say faith didn't justify you. He just said it can't justify you alone now that you are saved. And I tell you, I say this a lot, and I say it to you right now. Guys, I don't, I don't live right to try to be saved. I don't try to live right to make God love me. I live right the best I can because I love God. 
Come on now. Once you change that mindset, I don't do that stuff because I love God. I don't. I want. I want to please God. I want to be called his friend. I don't want to be caught somewhere else. I don't. I tell you. I, I tell you. I love my wife. She loved me. And I tell you, we. I do right by my marriage because I love God. And she loved that because she know that 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 all of us are at time or another are not gonna agree with each other. Not not get along all the time. You're gonna argue sometimes with your spouse or whatever. But if you love God enough, come on now. If you raise the level of your love, walk for God higher than your love walk for people. Come on now, because people are going to get on your nerve. You're going to get stuck. But because I love God so much, I'm going to love you. I'm going to do right by you. And that's what James is saying. Last verse, God here, 226. James, go back to what he's saying. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works. It's dead. James have left no room here. James 2 is to Listen, James 1 was already it started on a trajectory. Listen, you're going to keep reading James. Understand James' construct. James is telling us we, if we love God like we say we do, the culture that's trying to come in your mind through TV, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you watch out there, it, you, the only way to counsel that culture is the Word of God. And when the Word of God comes in, you must live out that word. The live, when we live out that word, we produce another culture. We activate our culture that counsel out the culture in my soul, man, in my thought, things I may think about myself, about people. But the word of God and working out that word help counsel that culture. Child of God, get in James. Come out of James 1 and stop at the end of James 2, and then we'll jump on James 3 next week. This is a powerful word right now because there's a culture out there that's bombarding us from like no other. In our emotion, how to respond to people differently. We need the, we need the culture of God, the grace of God, the peace of God to be upon our lives to magnify this thing. So, child of God, I'm praying for you tonight that you will allow the Word of God to cancel out that culture. If your family had a history of high blood pressure, I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now that you would not die of that thing that killed your mom that, or, or, or killed your dad. I plead the blood of Jesus over your finances that you will have be, be a better steward of your money. You become a giver, a tither, and that God will restore you back to perfect health. In the name of Jesus, we cancel out that culture that's trying to counsel you in Jesus' name. Every heart say amen. Woo! I'm excited about Jane. Hey, I, I hope I got you fired up about Jane. Child of God, thank you tonight for viewing us and staying on our page. I'm going to tell you, we're trying to get everybody that can. We're going to start trying to do more stuff on our YouTube page. So if you can, jump on YouTube on Thursday night and just subscribe, comment, let people know we're out there. We're trying to do some things with our YouTube page to make sure that we get, let folks know what's going on at HBWC Nation as we take care of our people locally and keep ministering to you globally. Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus. So, God, tonight, I want to give opportunity to bless God in your giving. If you want to bless God in your giving, man, woman, child, whoever's out there, we thank you so much tonight for how you've been giving, how you give. 10 and 15, 20 and whatever God lays on your heart tonight, you give as you choose, as you choose to. The guy's going to show you how to do that. And I speak blessing over your seed. That as you sow a seed tonight, there are some cultures that we've allowed I command those darkness to be counseled in the name of Jesus. That you will live out this word. That it will freeze the thing that's going to freeze you. You will counsel the thing that's going to counsel you. I speak blessing of you, your mind, your home, your household. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen and, and amen. Child, guys, we love you so much here at HBWC Nation. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for staying with us and connecting with us anyway, whether you're around the world. Our people love you. Guys, again, I'm Pastor Levi Rozier. Join us this Sunday at 9 a.m. to be live at a free register. But on at 11, we are, we are live online but in, and in person. So join us there also on our YouTube page. Guys, we love you guys so much. So, so, so much. And bless them on you and your family. I'm Pastor Levi. Come on, y'all. Sing all of